Today, I'm going to talk about the context of A Streetcar Named Desire, which is the set text for the European schools back this year, alongside the theme of conflict. Streetcar will form the basis of the third and final part of your written exam, and it tells a story of an emotionally charged confrontation between characters embodying the tra traditional values of the American South and the aggressive, rapidly changing world of modern America. Tennessee Williams was born Thomas Lanier Williams on March the 26th, 1914, in Columbus, Mississippi. The nickname Tennessee was not acquired until he was grown and attending college. Williams had an elder sister, Rose, who was later committed to a mental institution, and he also had a younger brother as well. Because their father often worked away from home, Williams and his siblings were particularly close to their mother, a southern belle and a daughter of a minister, and she enjoyed her status as the pillar of society of the local town. Williams did not have the easiest childhood. His father was a heavy drinker and a salesman who spent a lot of his time at work, therefore neglecting his children. His parents had a strained marriage and inspired various characters in Williams' plays. He was very close to his sister, who began suffering from this mental illness later in her life and eventually had to undergo intensive brain surgery, which actually left her institutionalised. This had a very negative effect on Williams and, and also his relationship with the mental health system. He was a homosexual in a time when homosexuality was not only widely unaccepted, but also seen by most people as a mental illness. We can see why New Orleans, a place of acceptance with very little discrimination, was an attractive place for Williams to set his plays. Uh, he often suffered from depression and resorted to heavy drinking, just like Blanche, and also drugs. He had a lifelong fear of death, especially death of cancer, uh, hinted at within the play with the death of Margaret. Now, all of these negative experiences throughout his life gen uh, greatly in influenced his plays and the themes within him. In A Streetcar Named Desire, alcoholism and mental illness are the two, or are two major themes throughout the play. New Orleans is a city in Louisiana, a southern state in the USA, whose legal system was influenced by the Napoleonic Code, uh, which is often cited by Stanley throughout the play. Known as something of a cultural melting pot, where in some parts, including the, the French Quarter, black and white lived alongside each other. A streetcar went into an area called Desire, another went to the ce uh, cemeteries. There's also an avenue called Elysian Fields, referring to where the souls of heroes and the virtuous went in Greek mythology. Known as a free and easy sort of place with a lot of music, was in this play, especially jazz, bars, gambling, including poker. I found a couple of interesting quotes about New Orleans, which kind of uh, give you a flavour of what it's what it's all about. This first one was from a uh, a local newspaper in 1851, uh, which said, uh, which quoted, "Everyone in this good city enjoys the full right to pursue, to pursue his own inclinations in all reasonable and unreasonable ways." There was also a quote from uh, 1919 uh, in a book called Sketches of America, which I believe was a guidebook, which uh, said to all men whose desire is only to be rich and live a short life, but a merry one, I have no hesitation in recommending New Orleans. And that was from Henry Bradshaw Fearton. And it gives you just a bit of flavour of what New Orleans was like back then. I'd like to talk briefly now about the rise of the New South. Now, as we've said, it was set in New Orleans in the late 1940s. And the play unfolds in a time where the United States in general, and the South in particular, were poised for major economic growth and significant social change. This gave rise, or this period gave rise to the New South as an impoverished, an impoverished society reliant on agriculture transformed into a more prosperous, industrial and diverse one. The transformation of New Orleans actually began during the Second World War. The city had been hit hard by the Great Depression with an unemployment rate that was sometimes well over 
But during the war, New Orleans boomed. A variety of manufacturing plants arose to build military equipment and supplies, and these factories employed thousands. Many of the workers were women and blacks who were holding for the first time full-time, well-paid jobs for the first time, as I say, in their lives. When the war ended, most of the military sites continued to operate, as did the factories. Many of those converting uh, to the manf manufacturing of consumer goods. Now, even more factories arose throughout the South to take advantage of the region's raw materials, plentiful land, the, the favourable tax laws and cheap and abundant labour. And although agriculture remained significant to the southern economy, the new money was to be made in manufacturing. Cities tripled in population as millions of rural inhabitants left farms to take jobs in trade and industry. Immigrants arrived from the Caribbean and South and Central America, attracted by the sense of growth and opportunity. Now, as cities grew in size and increased in diversity, they, became, uh, they began to have more of a political force. Although whites still remained dominant overall, the power of the landowning planter class, descendants of the 18th century Western European settlers, significantly, significantly diminished. Streetcar and social realism. Depicting a gritty, highly detailed slice of New Orleans life, a streetcar demonstrates the influence of the social realism movement in literature and the performing arts. Social realist dramas are naturalistic works set in actual places whose characters are not just individuals, but cultural archetypes, that is, they represent social classes, cultures, nationalities or races. The action of social realist dramas covers how characters coexist and normally dramatise uh, dramatize a clash between them. Typically, one of the character or group of characters rises and another falls, symbolising a shift in society or, or civilization. In the theatre, social realism developed in the 19, uh, sorry, in the 1870s with the plays of Henrik Ibsen, uh, August Strindberg, Anton Chekhov, and slightly learned, uh, later George Bernard Shaw. By the 1930s, it had become the dominant style of American theatre. Given the intense events transforming the world at the time, including the economic depression and the rising threat of war, it seemed almost mandatory to examine people within the context of the social order and as representatives of its different aspects. In the 1940s, rising playwrights like Tennessee Williams and Arthur uh, Miller slightly uh, altered this form. The, these playwrights grounded their plots, settings and characters in real life, but often used expressionistic th uh, theor uh, theoretical devices, such as flashbacks or juxtapose actions in their storytelling. And finally, I just want to talk about the reaction to the play. Now, Streetcar uh, received largely rave reviews upon its debut. Critics hailed it as being poetically written, insightful and honest. The audience, at its Broadway debut, gave it a 30-minute standing ovation. Some critics, however, objected to the play's frank depiction of sexuality and violence, accusing Williams of using this subject matter strictly for shock value. However, Streetcar won numerous awards and Williams went on to write a series of hit plays including The Rose Tattoo in 1951, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 55 and The Sweet Bird of Youth in 1959. His writing began to decline in the early 60s as did his commercial success. Uh, he published an autobiography in 1975 claiming he needed the large sum of money which was advanced by the publisher. Now Williams uh, Williams' plays often explore human vulnerability through uh, controversial subjects such as mental illness, alcoholism, ageing, sexual desire, in including homosexuality. While often hesitant to make a direct link between his life and his work, Williams did have a personal experience of many of these issues. He was openly homosexual during 
as I've mentioned before, during a time when homosexuality was not considered socially, socially acceptable in mainstream Amer American culture. He struggled with depression throughout his entire life and he experienced numerous mental breakdowns, including one in 1969. And by the 60s, he also suffered from drug and alcohol addiction that continued to haunt him until the until his very end of his life. On February the 25th, 1983, he choked to death at the age of 71 on a bottle cap that he had lodged in his throat and around his body uh, was found surrounded or his body was found surrounded by wine and pill bottles. It's believed the cap of one of these pill bottles is obviously what he choked on. Now, I hope that gives you a bit of an overview of the context of this play and I look forward to reading it with you and going through it more throughout this year. Thank you.